Greetings. Good morning. Welcome to uh, Watana Church. And um, my name is Pastor Life, and I'm a pastor of Mueng Thai Church, uh, a, a Thai church downtown. Um, I'm also honored every time I'm here. This is the only time I get to uh, brush up on my English and, um, and preach the Word of God in English. And so um, I'm very thankful. And I pray that this morning the Word of God would come upon you and challenge you in such a way that even though the text this morning is a simple text that you remember since your childhood, but this morning I, I ask that um, the Holy Spirit would, would convict you and, and challenge you um, to live out the Word of God this morning. So before we start, could I just give uh, a short word of prayer and ask God to be here with us? Heavenly Father, I come before you humble, knowing how much you love all of us. And Lord, I, I pray that this morning you would come down in your power, you would come down personally, intimately, and challenge all of us through your word of God. So Lord, I pray that you would be here and we invite you to speak and do whatever work you need to do in our lives. Help us to be obedient to your word. In your name we pray. Amen. This morning, I want to speak to you about um, the love of God. And even though the love of God has been preached over and over, it could never be um, extensively explained. But the, word, the love of God, to me, it, it drives me and pushes me to, to live a different sort of life. If, if you know, knew me before and if you knew me now, uh, you, you would not believe that, that this is the same person. Um, before I met God, my life was in such a wreck and, and God did some tremendous transforming work within my life. And this morning, um, I, I found myself sometimes get into this rut of, of Christianity that I believe, and I'm sure a lot of you are sitting here sometime believe this uh, to be true, that if you live your life, if you live your life good enough, then it would be pleasing to God. If you do something good enough to other people, uh, that is the will of God. And, you know, and I think a lot of times I misunderstood uh, this to be true because every time I, I felt like if I, if I do a little bit more than just a normal standard goodness, then I would be doing something pleasing to God. Which is true in a way, but sometimes I, I get into this mode where when I walk past the overpass, you know, and, and I see the beggar sitting there, I, I felt like if I would have just give 20 baht, it would be the standard price. But if I would have given, you know, a 50 baht, I would be a Christian. I would do something that Jesus Christ would, would, would wanted me to do to, to, to be more. When I go and eat at a restaurant, I felt like I had to tip more. Um, and, you know, when I go to a restaurant, sometimes uh, when I sit down and, and pray uh, with my family to eat, I, I felt like I have to pray a little bit louder so that I could be a witness to the next, you know, the next seat beside me. I'm like, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this food. And I, I felt like if I did that, I would be a great witness, you know, to the next um, seat. And I felt like if, if, if you and me, a lot of times I felt like if, if we did things good enough, it would be pleasing to our Heavenly Father. And I, I used to believe that, that if I live my life in that way, to do good, to be good, then it would be, it would be God's will. And I, I think a lot of Christians um, believe that to be true within their lives. I think a lot of you sitting here going, wait a minute, Pastor Life, isn't that true what you've just said? I mean, God is pleased 
when he sees our lives, you know, living in such a good manner and, and well behaved um, and, and, and doing good to our neighbors, isn't that what God really wants? Now, before you stone me, uh, if I've said this word, don't, please don't grab the stone and start throwing at the, you know. God is pleased when, when you are a good person, but that's not all His will. God wants you to be so much more than a good person. God wants you to be so much more than to live a good life. You know, I, I've seen a lot of Christians and a lot of organizations set out to do good to other people. And I, I have nothing against that. I have nothing against, you know, getting blankets up to the north where people are cold. I have nothing. I actually took so many students up on, you know, um, trips to do that. I've, 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 done, I've worked with so many organizations that, that do good for society. And I, I believe that is a good thing. But I don't want us to mistake, mistaken that this is actually all that we are called to do. And a lot of Christians sitting here, um, including me, I would be the first one who raised my hands and say, I thought that if I did just this, then it would be good enough to get to heaven, or it would be good enough to be pleasing in God's sight. And a lot of us, we believe that, you know, if we take this elderly person across the street, if we pick up the trash, if we do this and do that as a good person, but that's exactly not what God had in mind when He created us. God doesn't want us just to live a good life for other people. God doesn't, doesn't want just that. Because, you know, if you go and look in Matthew chapter 5, Jesus is saying, you know, if you greet your only, just the, the brothers or the people who love you, if you just do good to those, I mean, how different are you with a tax collector? Aren't they doing that? I mean, if you're just doing good, how are you different than, you know, the Gentiles? So this morning, I want to, I want to bring you to passages of Scripture that actually proclaims the calling of God in our lives that He does not just call us to live a good life but He calls us to lay down our lives for others. Now these are two different concepts that you and I, um, we sometimes blended together and we said, okay, this is the same thing. But actually to live our lives for other people and to lay down our lives for other people are two different worlds apart. There are so many teachers within, within our, our human history that you know, taught good philosophical um, lessons and have good quotes and people use them all the time. And, and you know, Confucius, um, Lord Buddha, all of them have good teaching. But when it comes to Jesus Christ, his teachings is a little bit different. If we dive into the, um, the passage of Scripture that we will do in, here in just a minute, if you look at God's message, when, he, when, when Jesus starts preaching, it demands us to follow and to be obedient. It, demand, it pushes us from a listener to a doer. It, it, it challenges the listener to just not listen and take down notes, but to actually put their foot forward. Get out of the boat and start walking. And I, I, I want to, to bring you to the first passage of Scripture this morning about God's love in our life. God is calling us to love other people in such a way that it confuses them, that it leaves questions. So the first passage of Scripture is John 3.16. The passage of Scripture that you and I, we, we know it by heart. All of you, you don't even have to, you know, look at the, the screen. You can just close your eyes and and actually say it together. Can you actually say it together this morning? One, two, three. Shall not perish, but have eternal life. Now, all of us that are sitting here, we, we remember that and we, we learn that and we listen in to it so many times until it, it sort of like 
glides through our consciousness. But if you sit down and you actually look at the words of, of God, for God so loved the world that it moves him to do something about his love. It pushes him to, to, to come into an action of giving up something that he loves dearly. For God so loved you and me that he actually had to sacrifice, that he actually has to lay down his one and only son. It is the only thing that he, he believes that it would change and transform the world. It is the only thing to cure sin. It is the only thing to allow the, the, the wicked person to go into heaven. It is so that it would be according to the rule. When one person sin, one person dies. For God so loved the sinners, just you and I, that he gave his one and only son. Now I have a son. And my son, if you knew him, he is uh, one of the sweetest kid I've known. I'm not biased, but he is. Um, he would walk up to, to teachers in our school that would, uh, she just lost her, her sister. And he would be the only student walking up to my, uh, the teacher and gave her a hug and said, you know, I want to give you a hug. He's grade three, and, and I knew you lost your, your sister, and you're sad, and I just want to hug you. I mean, the sweetest kid. Now, for me to imagine that I love someone so much that I put my son and give him up, let him die for someone or something that I love, now that is the kind of love that God is, is showing and modeling for us. If you love someone, you sacrifice the things you love most. And he shows that in Lord Jesus Christ on the cross, sacrificing himself. So this morning, as we come to the first passage of Scripture, we know that God is not just talking lessons. Not, God is not just on the board writing down the, 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 the teachings and just ask us to remember. God is wanting us to see what it's like to give up something that is dear so that you would get someone that you love. Now this morning, the second passage of Scripture is found um, in, in Mark chapter 12 that when Jesus is asked, what is the greatest law of, of Moses? And Jesus said, you know, love the Lord your God with all your heart. And then he moves on to the second. But the second rule, the second uh, greatest commandment is this. Love your neighbor as... I didn't hear that. Love your neighbor as yourself. That's right. Now, Jesus is basically saying... All the 600-something commandments in the Old Testament now has been boiled up and mixed and, and compact into these two scriptures that says, love the Lord with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. But if you, if you didn't know what he meant by neighbor, someone asked Jesus, you know, what, what do you mean by neighbor? And Jesus told the story of the Good Samaritans, right? And all of you sitting here, you know, you've heard before right please not if you have yes okay the good Samaritan and you realize that the Levites and the priests they all pass this Jewish person that's you know been beat up and been robbed but the person that actually cares for and cares for in such a way that it shows tender, mercy, love, and kindness. The kind, of, the kind of passion that he sits down, he bends out, get off his horse or mule or the animal, and, and he puts on the wine and puts on the oil and, and put him on the animal and took him to an inn and pays money. And Jesus turns around and says, now let me ask you, who is your neighbor? Now, for us sitting here going, well, our neighbor is the, you know, the someone who's in trouble. Just anyone out here who's in trouble. If you're in trouble, you're my neighbor. But the actual fact in the scripture tells you that the neighbor 
is the Samaritan and the Jews who are soul enemies. Who are, you know, Jews would go around, walk for miles and miles just to get around Samaritans so that they wouldn't touch foot on Samaritans. So Jesus is saying, your neighbor is actually your enemy. And Jesus is saying, love your neighbor. Who is your enemy? Now, how many of you sitting here have a neighboring enemy? Please nod. No, I'm just kidding. Don't nod. But I believe all of you are sitting here. You have someone who annoys you. You have someone who just, um, you don't, don't really get along. And you, you're trying to avoid. You're, try, you're trying not to have an argument. Or someone in your life that just keeps picking on you. Or just some, and Jesus is saying, you know what? If you're going to love just as the Heavenly Father loves you, you're going to have to love not just the loving neighbors, but also your enemy. And so this morning, we see two passages of Scripture that, that shines light on how we should live our life of love. Now, when we come to the third passage and the final passage this morning, this is a passage where we, a lot of times, forget. We, 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 been memorizing John 3.16 uh, all our lives and we forget to memorize 1 John 3.16. So if you don't know 1 John 3.16, um, I think it, should, it would be on the, the screen. But if it's not, it says, this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And here's the catch. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. Now, a lot of you sitting here going, well, I can love my neighbor. I can do good to my enemy. I mean, I've tried. I prayed for those who persecute me. I, I can do good for society. I can, I can, you know, do so many good things for, with so many good organizations. But Jesus is like, hey, wait a minute. No, that's not what I'm asking you to do. I want you to love other people, especially your enemy, the same way I love you. Because yet when we are still sinners, yet when we were still God's enemy, Christ died for us. And so if someone is a sinner, someone is an enemy, shouldn't we love them? Yes, you should. But it's not just that. Christ didn't just love them. I mean, this world would be a different world if 2,000 years ago, Jesus walked this world and he healed people and he encouraged them and he pat them on the back and he did good and he, you know, set up the, the school of teaching of Jesus. But he didn't. He lived his life and he did ministry of, of doing good to other people for three years. But in that final year of his life, he laid it down. He died. He gave up something that he loves most, that he didn't want to give up. I mean, he cried in Gethsemane. He asked God that this cup would be moved from me. I mean, he loved his life. He didn't want to go through that pain and suffering. He didn't want the, the sin of the world to be, uh, to be upon him. But he did because he loves you and I. And this morning he calls you and I to, be, to have that mindset of Jesus Christ in you. Is that to love other people to a point where you lay down your life for them. I'm, I'm a marriage counselor and I, when I sit couples down and I ask them, you know what, in your definition, what is love? I want to hear and, you know, one people would say something, one people would say something. And most of the couples would say, love is that, you know, that kind of feeling. Love is that understanding of each other. Love is that... And they try to describe love in such a way that they, they possibly could understand. But, you know, when it boils down to the very core of love, to the very content of love, what is love? Love is to suffer 
for other people. Love is to suffer for their good. I mean, if you marry, you know this to be true. You suffer for the one you love. I mean, my wife asked me to do things I don't want to do. Yes, all the husband, please nod. Sometimes, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, not in the, I'm not ready to do that. But because I love her. So this morning, as, as we, we come to the Word of God, Jesus is calling. He looks to his disciples and says, you know what? I love you guys, and I give my life for you guys, and I want you to go out and do exactly the same thing. You know why this passage of Scripture has not been heard a lot or preached a lot? Why John 3.16 seems, you know, so attractive? Because we get everlasting life. It sounds good. But when it comes to this passage of Scripture, it requires us to move from a listener to a doer. And not just a doer, a person that would give up something. Now this morning, what makes you have life? What is something that you would consider as factors, important factors in your life? Is it time? Is it energy? Is it money? Your job, probably? And this morning, Jesus looks, and I, I, I hope that this passage of Scripture is speaking to you, saying that, you know what? You've got to lay down those things for other people. God is calling you. And this is a calling for every individual who believes in Him. The only way this world will know Christ is not by someone who do, to do good. I mean, there's such a difference between living your life for someone so that they would see the goodness of Christ and to lay down your life for someone so that they would experience the love of Christ. In my life, I've, I've, I've met many missionaries, and there are all sorts of missionaries. But I appreciate the missionaries in, in my church. They come from an organization called TMS Global. And what they do is they, they spend six months studying our language, Thai language, before they move to Thailand. And, and when they move to Thailand, they they lay down everything that they are and they, they, they give up, they lay down their bags, they took up the, the form of, of Thai person, they go and live in the small community, they eat what they, the Thai people eat, they, they eat more Thai than me and I'm Thai and I'm ashamed of myself but I'm proud that, I, I mean I've seen people who gave up they're not just not just parts of their lives, but their whole entire family. Their kids are playing on the ground in right at, you know, playing with chickens, just like the normal Thai kids. And I see that, and I, I go, wow, this this is not just living your life to teach English in a school uh, for someone, but this is giving up your life for. I mean, not just not just Thai language, but but time, but energy, but every part of their being. When God called me out of uh, international school setting, hand in my, my, my leave, my letter, and I asked God, Lord, what do you want me? How do you, how do you want me to, to live my life for the, the rest of my life? Who do you want me to, to lay down my life for? Because, I mean, I've, I've given my time to the international schools. I play basketball with them. I sat down and I cried with them. I, I visit them in hospital. I visit their homes. I take them on, on trips. I, I preach at them and I counsel them. But now, when you call me to a full-time, where do you want, who do you want me to lay down my life for? And God reveals that it's for the poor and the needy. I opened up an English school 
I teach uh, slum kids um, in near near my church, and I teach taxi drivers English, and we have a, a whole course. And this kind of love, when when I go walk into the classroom, and the taxi drivers just looks at me and say, "Teacher, I I know you." I know you want to teach us English, but I don't understand why. It just confuses them. It it brings them to a a point where they ask you why. When my father and mother is a you know both of them have doctorate degrees from the states, and both of them drive seven hours a week. They've been driving for 15 years, one million kilometers. They broke down three cars. They I mean destroyed it. And and you know just to teach English to the poor、uh, students in Ryan, and the students look at them and they go, why, why are you doing this? I mean, you're seventy two. Why are you coming to teach us? Why are you driving from from Bangkok to to Ran Nong for nine hours and teach us for two days and then go back? Why? Because God has called us not just to live a a good life for other people. Because God has called us to lay down our entire existence for their benefit. I have two students that come to study with me at, at, at night. I don't teach privately, but two students I, that God reveals to me and say, "Life, take them on and and and, and take them and, and preach them and." Teach them and, and and be friends with them. They come to study with me from 9 p.m. to midnight. I mean, who teaches at 9 p.m. to midnight? I don't know. But I know one thing that I do have to lay down my life for other people. I w- I was given an opportunity to go and teach at this course at a university. And this course is called DEF, and a lot of uh, teachers, uh, people that comes to this course, they paid two hundred thousand to come and study this course for ten ten weeks. And I was one of the main speaker, and I go up and I I teach on uh, uh, online social、uh, business, and and I told them what kind of work that I do,、uh, the ministries that I have,、uh, and they they looked at me, they don't understand. These are businessmen who you know have. Millions and millions of them. They control their company, CEO, and everything. And they look at me and they go, "Why? Why are you doing this? I don't understand. You, you, you had money. You, you had status. Why are you doing this?" And this morning, after I mean, after I taught that course, when I came down, all these businessmen came to me and said, "Pastor." I want to do what you do. I go great. They said, but I can't. How much is your project? Here's my business card. I'll, whatever amount you need, just tell me. I go well. That's great, but no, that's not what I want. I want you to get in a van with me and go to Riot, and I want you to. To spend your time, I want you to give your life, part of your life at least. And they said, "I can't." See, God is calling us to do something that is impossible. Yeah, I said it this morning. All the things that I preach, all of those are impossible. You can't do it. You can only do good, but you can't lay down your life for other people. Not by yourself. The only way you can do that is to come to an understanding of God's love for you, the kind of love that that He would sacrifice His own life for you. And when you come to that knowledge, when you come to that understanding, when it seeps into your heart, then your 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 whole being, your whole entire existence starts moving, and it's naturally laying down of life for the benefit of other people. In Philippians chapter three, verse ten, I want to know Christ. Yes, I want to know the power of His resurrection and participation. Listen to me, participation in His suffering. I want to suffer like Jesus Christ did, so that other people would understand how much I love Him. I mean, Jesus Christ suffered a lot. You've seen the Passion of the Christ, 
And Apostle Paul said, I want to participate in that. Nobody in their right mind says that. Only the people that has been called to do so. And here's the catch. I want to participate in his suffering. Becoming like him in his death. I know it's, it's a passage of scripture that's hard to, to swallow in and, and actually obey it. But this morning, before I close, it's not something big that you have to do. The laying down of life is not, you know, you don't walk out in front of Sukumwit and push someone out of the road and say, I'll die for you. No, it's not, not, nothing like that. It's just small little things that you give up. My haircut. I, I value my hair. Thai people value, especially men. Thai men value their hair a lot because we have a lot of them. When I was in uh, international school, I get haircut about 300 baht. I think it's an okay price for a Christian to get a haircut at 300 baht. But um, after, after I became a pastor, I don't want to spend that much or I don't have that much to spend. So I, I go to get a haircut for 100 baht at a BTS or a MRT. They have an easy, quick cut. But one day the shop was closed. so. I decide to walk into my soy, and there's, you know, the traditional Thai barber. You know, the adults, 90 baht, and for the children, 70 baht. But I've heard stories about, you know, they're not clean and using the same blade and, you know, disease and whatnot. But you know what? I don't have money, so I'll just walk in. And I, I sat down, and since that day, I determined that I'm going to come and get a haircut here with that exact barber. And I'm going to sit with him. He has one hour with me. I mean, I have his one hour. And I declared that no matter how bad my haircut comes out, and it came out quite not okay. <laughs> I mean, I looked into the mirror and I said, well, that's okay, because I get to spend one hour with this guy. And now, his kids come and study English for free. And now I'm, you know, investing in his life. Anything he wants me to... I, uh, that's laying down a, a, a part of your life. That's laying down my hair, though. But that's just the small little things God has called. I mean, if we obey God's message this morning, you know, what kind of church what kind of life we would be living. So I just, I just want to leave the Word of God with you and, and hope the Spirit moves you to, to do His work within you. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we come before you and I ask that you would change our attitude about living our lives to love other people. I mean, it's easy to love them by being kind and doing good, but Lord, I pray that that's not all that we do. I pray that you challenge us to lay down our lives for other people so that they would come to a loving, saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, our Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.